good morning, Chase Aaron. Good morning, Corey Jones. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, are you doing a chocolate milkshake first thing in the morning? <laughs> no, this is. I don't know. It's like a caramel blended coffee sort of thing. It's like a fourth cup of coffee, a half cup of milk, two tablespoons of caramel, a cup of ice, and one banana. Yikes. It's good. It has caffeine in it, so I'm going to be awake. Jeremy, did you drink your coffee this morning? Jeremy does not drink coffee. Just Coke? No. Coke is the only thing you drink? Zero. Mellow yellow zero. I didn't know that that was a thing. Yes. Does everyone else, did you all drink your coffee? I love coffee. 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 I love co
but you can look on the events tab, it's there. If you have a hard time signing up online, your family still wants you to go, just send me a text or something like that. And the other thing, Brian, you're throwing me off. <laughs> What's it doing? Slow, just slow. It's just going <laughs> slow. <laughs> Sixth grade preview day, that's when you go on Wednesday night to check out the junior high. Um, you don't need to sign up, just show up. And family, That is now. 20 days from my birthday. Yay! Family, Finally, night is going to be here. It's back. Before you know it, it's warming up. The pool is going to be nice and warm. It's hopefully not going to rain this time. And I've had some of you ask me about this in the past. It says for younger kids and then some older students, and you're like, but I'm a preteen. What's that mean? I'm between them. And I go, isn't that just such a cool benefit? You get to go to both if you want to. Whoa. So you can come early. You can stay late. It's cool with me. You just hang out. And if you have, like, younger siblings and stuff, they can hang out, too. It's, it's all good. It's just a party for everybody. Last but not least, the greatest week of your entire Come on, stop. That's why I'm going camping the on. The registration Florida. deadline is next week. Yeah, this form is a very important form this week. So it's going to give you a big responsibility. At the end of service, give one to everybody. Except for the sixth graders. Kick the sixth graders. Oh my okay. no. Our sixth graders nice. go to CIY Mix. Sorry, and they need some bridges to go. I can't go to Mix either, y'all. I have to cheer. You're gonna have to have a double tap. Uh, Poland's. I don't think I've got a person. No, I have. That's what we're gonna say in the top of that. Alright, alright. Okay, just okay. 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 making sure. Aspen. Quentin's going to sixth grade. Or seventh. Yeah, he's in sixth grade. That's what we got. And CIY Mix. There's the information that you need to know. Um, did I introduce you guys to uh, Victor yet? Yep. Yep. Okay, then we don't need to watch that. Let's jump into today's game. Today. It is, we're doing this bright side thing, so um, Brian, I need you to hit the lights. Not literally, I know it's a dad joke and you just want to punch the panel, but please don't, just turn them off. Um, tonight, now that it's dark, wait, it's still a little, it's still a little bright. Hey, background, turn off those lights. Oh man, Four movies. Turning off those green lights just takes too much work. All right, so I need two volunteers, Eric, can you pick a dude? And Tiffany, can you pick a lady? Oh, We're going to go good old-fashioned boys versus girls on this one. Right. Now, I need someone that is willing to do some drawing, some artistic poetry, and uh, just to make some magical happen stuff here. Wonderful Benji, over here. Isabel, over here. Now, this game is called Murky Mark, right? Am I saying that word right? Mark. Mark. Weird. And the way that this game works is you will have four seconds to look at a picture on the screen, and then you need to recreate that picture on your whiteboard using your artistry. And how long should I give them to do it? Forty-five seconds. Forty-five seconds yes. sounds fabulous. 45 seconds to recreate a masterful piece of art. Now there's a couple catches. Catch number one is, now you can actually do a little quick cheat there. You see that picture? You can look at that picture for a second. This will be a good test run for you. And then it's gonna be on the screen. You'll be able to look at it for four seconds. The picture's going to erase. You're gonna throw on your blindfold and then you're going to draw the best murky mark picture you can possibly draw, recreating this perfect spring, what? wonderful <laughs> image of spring, because spring is here. Any questions for you? No? no? All right. Get your blindfolds ready. You, do you need your glasses to see? Okay, good. So, Brian, picture up. Look at the picture, look at the picture, look at the picture. Here we go. You're going to recreate this masterpiece. This wonderful piece of spring art. Go, blindfolds on. Timer is started. 45 seconds on the clock. Ding. 
No pressure. But it better be Good start going. You're good, Bill. There's you got a, definitely a little cheating going on there. Okay, let's see. You better get what they're on. Oh, yeah, I see. Isabella has the sun and the mountains and the ghost. And the ghost? Oh, my bad. <laughs> tried to just look. I didn't see that picture. Goes, hey, have you guys ever set a timer for 48 seconds yeah. but did minutes instead? <laughs> About how much longer should I give them? 15. Yeah. 15. 15. 15 seconds. Let's get rid of that minute timer there. Get a second timer. That'll be better. All right, let's count them down. 10 seconds. Keep it on. 9, 8, 7. All men is good. So many details. How many seconds we got left? 2. 2. Heads down, heads down. Okay. Brian, I'm going to need to bring up the lights a little bit. Turn your art around. Show it off. Show it off. Oh. Oh, my God. Woo! Oh, Isabel, blow it out. Oh, yeah. Isabel. Oh, you're going to have to do some clicking because of the timer. What do you always have the witcher? Let's compare. Let's see how this Check looks. Check that out. Oh, my goodness. It's identical. They are no way. perfectly drawn. They have every detail in. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> We're going to have to go to this week's expert. Mike, I know you've been studying art in school for years. Who do you think has drawn this one the best? That's not fair. He's biased. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be the leader. Not very so. <laughs> Too much no. pressure? Benji. It's gonna be? It's a tie. <laughs> I guess we'll have to do a tiebreaker. Brian, lights down. Erase using the uh, eraser that I planned on using. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. I, oh, no, 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 you got four seconds. Look at your next piece of art. Here we go. Spring. Oh, look at all those spring details there. Time is up. The line folds on. Bugs Bunny in the corner. I thought it was another ghost. This is also a solid foundation. Definitely a good river. Benji's got a good river going. It's some, uh, the sun, yes, and some clouds. And some grass, maybe. I don't know, Brian, can you click that first slide again? I just didn't recall. Isabel, make sure you get all those details that we got. 15 seconds left. Yeah, this, you got this, you got this. You're going to need another art expert. Oh, I'm an art expert. You've been studying on it too, right? <laughs> so you have, you know, a very abstract art. You can see what it is. Watercolors. You have to be our judge. Mark this down. Black folds off. Turn him around. Oh, yeah. Pretty. There's details and lines and fish and flowers and birds and the bunny in the corner. Oh man, the bird is on point, Isabel. This is the tough one. Do you need to get a better look at the center? Are you good from there? All right, it's gonna be a tough one. Who do you think? Oh yeah, see it now. Isabel. Sorry, Benji, but it's Isabel, the art expert has spoken. And we do have time for one more. Erase blindfolds. Or no, don't do blindfolds yet. We need to see our next beautiful piece of art. Erase the blindfolds. No, but then we're gonna have to do another tiebreaker. Or maybe you'll annihilate. Oh wait, no. If we, we wouldn't have to yeah. do another tiebreaker. Let's see. Let's see. You better look. How easy. That's going to be so easy. Blindfolds on. Blindfolds on. Get drawing. Do you guys remember all those details? There was a deer. There's a deer. A flower. 
Burn. Burn out. How long? The sun is a long way away, like 9 million miles. Do your math. You learned how fast the speed of light was. 186,000 miles a second. 9 million miles. 93 million miles. 93 million miles. 93 million miles. Wait, are we talking about miles or seconds? We're talking about how long it would it take for us to notice the sun went dark. These fourth graders are crushing their math right now. Long division, they got formulas going. All right. <laughs> No one Google. No Googling. Or asking Siri or Hey Google or Alexa. All right. Here we go. Here we go. What you got? Eight minutes. Yeah, somebody may have been here on Thursday. What you got? Four seconds. Four seconds? Four days? Twelve minutes? Eight seconds. Well, the correct answer. You are exactly right. She did. She actually did. Oh, Addie knew. Good job. All right. High five. Yeah. Eight minutes, 20 seconds. All right, what's the explanation? Listen up, listen up. That's exactly right. So it takes eight minutes for the light. So when the sun, the sunlight we're seeing happened eight minutes ago. So if the sun were to be turned off, we would not know until eight minutes later. And then we die. Yep, the and then, then we would die. Yeah, <laughs> we would die. Yeah, we would die. Where's she going? Like? <laughs> she's going to outlaw me. No, just call me. <laughs> All right, last question. Here we go. Which is faster, light or darkness? Me. Oh, Jonathan, we know how fast you are. You've answered me to every question. Which is faster, light or darkness? Five seconds. Oh, I'm not, I don't have a countdown time today. I'm going to all day. What's your answer? Correct. Come back to you. What you got, Isabel? Right. Okay, hold on. What you got, sixth grade? Sixth grade boys, what you got? Light. Tyler. Like, the answer is, they said it over here, and they said it, it's, they cancel each other out. Trick question, darkness? I told you! I told you! What's going on? Well, because darkness is just the absence of light, so. Perfect. But I went to Washington, D.C., and I was reading some one little thing. That's not even a read. And that's what we did. I can't try to read, Eric. All right, you can stay for some longer, or you can get back to your seats. I don't really care how you guys want to listen today. That's how I Thanks for participating. And don't race Jonathan because he's the fastest kid ever. I smoke Jonathan right now. Oh, hey, challenge. I smoke him right now. After service, it's going down to the city station parking lot. I smoke him right now. Being 80 years old, I get you, Jonathan. I'll tell you what I do. Bell, I race you with Tyler on my back. Oh, I like it. Tyler. Okay, we're gonna throw you off. Now listen up, listen up. So, 
like I so since I do cheer, I have to my cheer coach sometimes mm-hmm. because like I'll be in there and she's like, okay, they're gonna throw you up and you're gonna take your arms and you're just gonna spin down and they'll catch you. And I'm like, are you sure they're gonna catch me? That's and one time they didn't catch me and it hurt really yeah, bad and so I didn't stop like a week. Annabelle's a flyer for not for not cheerleading. Not. For those who don't know what that is, she gets thrown up in the air by her teammates yeah, and then they gotta catch her. I was a flyer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? I can <laughs> <laughs> so, so when Annabelle's in the air, she's questioning. She's in her head. She's thinking, "Oh, am I going to well, get?" Well, I mean, it's like scary, dude. It is like, scary, it's totally. Like, yeah. One more, one more. Anyone else? Chase, what you got, buddy? My mom always told me if I drank coffee, it would stuff my gross. Yeah. One years later, <laughs> I'm still gross. You, you, you should be like six four right me now. Too. I know. That's exactly. You're only like five ten. I'm so tall. Too much coffee. Too much coffee. Um, So, uh, Miss Pullen is a teacher, right, at Carrollton, and she asks her students questions all the time. And sometimes they get them right, sometimes they get them wrong. What subject do you teach? Math. Math. So math's a, that's a good, good, I was not good at math in school, so I ask my math teachers a lot questions on help with whatever we were working through. Um, So, uh, some of you guys do sports, right? And your coaches make you do silly things. Who does sports in here? Right? Who's coached sports in here? Yeah? So your coaches might make you do a drill, right, that's maybe not related to it's it. Weird. And you're like, why are we doing this, coach? It doesn't make any sense. And your coach is like, trust me, it's part of the process. And you're like, what's the process? And who's seen uh, the new Karate Kid movie? Well, it's not so new anymore. Daniel? David Smith and... Um, and uh, Jackie Chan, oh, uh, came out. He's, hey, guess who's seen that movie? Oh, like the wax on, wax, yeah, that yeah. So he, he yeah. said he's, he's, one of the drills he makes Jaden Smith do is take his jacket on, take his jacket off, take his jacket on, and he's wondering, he's like, I don't understand why I have to do this. And so then he gets in the ring with these other kids, and his movements are like, to defend himself, his movements are like the movement he was doing while taking his jacket on. Taking it off. What? So there's reasons <laughs> that when we when and when we teach you something in the classroom or on the on the uh, football field or soccer field or court or whatever that we do drills and, and different exercises so you guys can learn it um, a different way. So our questions. Um, let me ask another question. We got a lot of questions. Today. I think there's a question slide, a question mark slide, and then or we can we have this nice question light too. Um, our questions good. Yeah. Right. Is it is it okay to question stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I mean, completely I agree. agree. Now, are, are there are there silly questions sometimes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. probably so. But for the most part, for the most part, questions are really good, and, and it helps us, especially kids. I have a seven year old, thirteen year old, and a four year old, and my seven year old, he questions everything. Oh man. Why? And I'm like, you know? I, I, you know, I feel like I'm giving him the right answer, and he's still at me. Well, why is it doing that? Why, 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 why? But, but at the same time, he, he wants to know, right? And so I think it's good that he's questioning things, even though sometimes, as a parent, and because I'm selfish, it gets on my nerves. So, anyways, that's besides the point. Um, he drives down right there. So, um, Ten year old. What happened, so let's let's go back to the story we learned last week. At the resurrection, who found the tomb that, that was empty? Isabel. Mary. Mary, yeah. And so what did what did she do? What did she do when she saw the tomb? The stone had been moved. Remember? You can shout it out, it's fine. She told the disciples. Uh-huh. Yep. She went and told uh, you know who she told? <laughs> Peter and John first. All right, so she told Peter and John, and um, what was confusing to Mary and the other disciples that went and looked in the tomb, the burial cloth was still there, and they didn't they didn't understand why, and so they questioned that. They they were like, why is the burial cloth there? If somebody took his body, which is what the religious leaders said, his body was taken, then why would they leave the burial cloth and just take his body? And so as they're questioning that. That's when Jesus appeared to them on the on the road, and uh, it was um, I, for me. If if that would happen to me, I would I, don't, I would probably pass out or something. Because even even back then, like even today, if somebody were come back to life, like we know 
that it's impossible, right? Or we think it's impossible. That's all to be a zombie. And so, yeah, to be a zombie. And then the zombie apocalypse starts. That's a whole nother. We can get off on that side subject, right? But the uh, but to see Jesus come back to life, they were they were couldn't believe it. But a lot of them, when he met with the disciples, um, so he so he comes back to life, and she Mary tells the disciples, and um, they were not really sure. At first, they were not really understanding if it was true or not. So they all, who, who remembers where the disciples were when Jesus appeared to all 11 of them? Anybody? Um, there was a room upstairs, and they called it the upper room, right? So they were in the upper room, and they're, and they're scared, right? They're, they're, they're scared because they are worried that what happened to Jesus is going to happen to them, right? Jesus was crucified. He, he went through this horrible torture and death. And the disciples are scared that this is going to happen to them, too. And so they, um, they lock themselves up. And so while they're locked up in this room uh, with each other, Jesus appears to them. Anyone know what Jesus tells them? Anybody? Tyler? Tyler, forget. If you don't know, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I don't know his exact words, but he was basically just saying that I think that he was that he had resurrected and like he was explaining how like heaven was all powerful and all right. how they shouldn't be afraid. Yeah. All right. So there's a verse. Go ahead, throw it up there, and go ahead, Isabel, read it for me. So Jesus appears to them, and you know some of them are scared they're going to die. Some of them don't really believe it's him. Only at this point, only a couple people have seen him, Mary, 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 and um, they weren't sure that you know maybe they were questioning her. Are you sure that's who you saw? And so he appears. He appears in this room, and he says, "Jesus." It says Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, "May peace be with you." Then he showed them his hands and his side. Why do you think he showed him his hands? The nails. Yeah. What, what, what would be there? Scars. Scars and holes, right, yeah. where they drove him through. And then why do you think he showed him his side? Who remembers what happened towards the end of the crucifixion after he had almost, he was almost dead on the cross? Didn't they whip him with the whip? They did that on the way, but something got stuck in, stuck in his side. Uh, they slashed his side to make sure he was dead. Yeah. Uh, so they, they stuck a spear in him to make sure he was dead. And so he has this giant gash essentially in his, in his side and so he showed him that too to prove that it was him so Jesus is everyone is excited right They're, they can't believe that Jesus come back that what he said was going to happen actually happened except for one disciple there was one disciple that questioned um, that actually questioned Jesus and I think again this is good does anyone know who that person was wow really who was it Thomas that's right Side note, my middle name is Thomas. Uh, so Thomas questioned Jesus, and he said, anyone know what, know, know what he asked him? He had lots of questions. What do you think he asked? Do you love me? He said, do you love me? Yeah, that was one of them. So uh, let's go to verse, throw that next verse up there. Who wants to read it? Go ahead, Adam. First, I must see the nail marks in his hand. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe that what you said. Very good, thank you. So Thomas actually wanted to check it out for himself. Who, who does that? When they question something and they're told an answer and you're still like, uh, I don't know if that's true or not. Does anyone do that? I do that. I, I, I sometimes want to know the answer for myself and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Especially if you go out and find the answer yourself uh, without Google, because Google does everything now. But uh, so Thomas, Thomas still questioned it. He wasn't, he wasn't quite sure that this man standing in front of them, even though he showed him his hands and his side, still wasn't quite sure. So he wanted to check it out himself. So he, he walks up to Jesus and he feels his hands and he feels his side. And um, Thomas, uh, you know, he still, even even though he did that, he still kind of doubted. So. A week had passed, and uh, the disciples were gathered in the house again. And Thomas was there with them, and, they, and they're up in this they're up in this room again. And then, throw that verse up there. The next one. All right, well, who wants to read this? Who hadn't read yet? 
Jeremy hadn't read yet? Go ahead, Jeremy. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger in here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. So, so even though Thomas questioned it and he still kind of doubted, um, Jesus was like, look, man, I am who I say I am. And just stop. Like, stop thinking I'm not who I say I am. Here I am again, appearing with you guys. Whoever does that with their parents? Like, even though your parents tell you the right answer, and as parents that are in here, and myself, when I tell my kids the right answer, and they still question, whoo, man, that makes me frustrated. Yeah, that's what frustrated. Said, I told you so. And so he says, yeah, that's essentially what Jesus is saying. Look, Thomas, I told you so. He's, he's kind of like, he's frustrated with him. Essentially, he's saying, look, I am who I say I am. You're still doubting me. Quit doubting me and, and believe me. Does anyone, um, has anyone in here ever doubted Jesus? I have. I have. There have been times in my life, and you guys may not have experienced this yet, but as you grow older, there will be times in your life where you'll be like, really, God? Like, why would you do that to me or my family or my friends? Um, with Maybe with a death or something like that. Um, you know, it, it, it can be tough. And so... At this point, Thomas believes Jesus because Jesus calls him out straight up. He says, look, I am who I say I am. Quit doubting and believe. So Jesus was dead, and everybody knew that to be true, and Thomas questioned it. Um, so because he questioned that, Jesus had to you know, go prove who he was. I think this is important to remember because um, God is okay with our questions, and he can help us. You know, learn and understand things better if we question things. If if we just take, there are people that will you'll come across in your life, and they'll tell you things, and you might believe them, and you might not. But my biggest thing is is if you question that and you learn it for yourself, then you educate yourself. When you educate yourself, you can make a an, a good decision on whatever it is you're learning or whatever it is you're wanting to teach. And so, um, just because. We stand up here in front of you every Sunday and Shannon downstairs and they preach the word and they tell us, you know, hey, this is what the Bible says. It's very important that you guys go out there and read it and understand it on your own, too. And if you have questions about it, don't be afraid to ask your parents or, or Corey or any of the uh, teachers here because we can help you get answers. And that's kind of the whole point. And so um, when we're sad or anxious or scared or nervous or whatever, we can talk to God about it. And, you know, he'll give us peace and uh, we can understand things better. So um, as we go into small group after worship here in a minute, we're going to look at this key question. What questions do you have for God? So I want you to be thinking about that um, during worship and what maybe some questions you have. And then we'll talk about that more in, in small group. So, who's, Delissa, are you doing it today? She's ready. Um, so, let me pray. Um, let me, and let me uh, pray for Delissa and the music and the time of worship we're about to get in. And just think about this question as we get into that. So, uh, let's pray. Father God, thank you for today. God, I thank you for uh, giving us um, the ability to ask questions, the ability to learn, um, giving us that knowledge so we can... Uh, absorb it and take it in and, and um, turn it into wisdom, God. Thank you for your son, Jesus, for um, turning us into believers and not doubters. Um, and so I, I really thank you for that. God, I just ask that you be with us during this time of worship um, as we sing and, and um, partake in the communion, God. Thank you for your son and his uh, what he did for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.